Thank you. Um, there's a thing, I'm in 12 step groups. Um, step nine in 12 step groups. So let's get think if this is on, yeah. 12 step groups is you make amends unless when to do so, thank you, would create more harm to another. Uh, that's step nine in a 12 step group. But what if you go to a 12 step group and you also come to, to a group like A Course in Miracles group where you're reading Hawkins' work or you're practicing being in the observer? Do you still need to make amends uh, for things you don't? It, it's one of those things, again, which I'd say muscle testing will be the absolute thing. But um, I go to 12 step groups um, and I sort of see going into 12 step groups and I have a spiritual mentor called a sponsor, I would normally try and do whatever my sponsor says because I'm protected by the energy of unconditional love. That's a vibration not as high as the Course in Miracles. But, you know, there's also no harm in saying sorry to people and making amends like, uh, you know, um, I'm sorry I was quite rude uh, uh, the last time we met. If you, if you transcend that, you know, uh, or you trans you're doing the Course of Miracles, it's like, uh, uh, there's, there's not, it says there's nothing to forgive. Mm. So, you know, so, and often when you're in the non-dual place, there isn't a me and a you and the past doesn't exist. But, also, um, and also if you're in a non-dual place, you haven't got, you can't remember anything, and if you do remember it, it will happen. So there is that as well. But I'm in 12th degree, and someone said to do it, I'd probably do it. Um, when you're transcending everything, uh, I will say with step nine amends for people who are doing 12 steps, it's good to process everything before you make the amend. Um, so if you've got, you know, to say sorry when you still want to kill them, I think is less helpful than to at least get the, the energy of forgiveness before mm. you say I'm sorry for what I did. Otherwise, they'll be able to pick up on some level. It's not a sincere apology. So some sponsors in 12-step groups might not tell you to process your feelings before you apologize. But I personally think it's good, it's better to process and to make the event meaningless and to do, do the Course of Miracles and to do the resentment prayer and to, and to feel like the resentment is processed before you apologize because that would be a better, a better uh, apology and amend and to make it with a lot of unresolved stuff. Uh, and you may also, if you're an addict, you may also carry on doing, like if I'm gonna to say to someone, like I'm sorry I stole your donuts last week and I, haven't, and I haven't resolved it and I haven't got to that spiritual vibration, then I may end up stealing the donuts again the following week after I've said I'm sorry that I stole your donuts. I just wanna apologize for that and here's another donut. And then I, st I steal another donut the following week. So if you process it, so that you transcend the donuts, you make it and you've processed it. You're now say, sorry, I stole your donut. <clears throat> Here's a new donut for you. I apologize for taking it. And you're not likely to steal a donut from them again next week. So you can now live up to the apology. Or if you stole money from them, or you stole donuts from them, or whatever, or, uh, or uh, whatever it is, you can live up to that vibration. Uh, whereas if you've not processed it, there's a risk that you may fall back into the behavior that you did that required the amend. Um, I'm going to say something interesting for 12 steps. I mean, I think <clears throat> as you do 12 step stuff, I mean, Hawkins said something really, really interesting once, which was really, really helpful for me um, with guilt and being spiritually perfect all the time. And he said it, and it really, really helped a lot. Um, it's a bit like what, I can't remember the exact word, but like, 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 let's say I'm on the tube and I feel like someone's shoved me and then I sort of say, I, I react to them and I say, look, you know, give me space, you um, bleep, bleep, bleep. And I say that on camera, give me space, you bleep. And then I, I leave and I haven't apologised to them. Uh, and then you'd feel, if you're in 12 step, you'd feel guilt. Oh my God, I didn't apologise, I'd probably never see them again and I probably gave them a bad day because I call them a bleep, bleep, bleep. But actually, if you then, uh, if you do an act of service uh, later on, that can probably counteract, in terms of positive and negative karma, that eradicates it. Like, one act of love for doing one, one small act, which is 
is almost like in terms of the universe you've given more love into the universe than that small thing was so you can just forget it don't worry about it <clears throat> so it's like I've outputted <clears throat> like let's say I was helping someone with their food addiction that is like a thousand units of love into the into the world and me saying bleep 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 to the person with the tube who shoved me is probably like taking half a unit out so he said like just forget it don't worry about it you know your life you don't have to like hold on to that mm -hmm. so when you're trying to be of love to the whole universe and then for one second you're a bit rude uh, <clears throat> It's like, oh, I, I got that from negative karma and positive karma. It's like, you don't have to worry about that because you doing that act of love and service there is more than counterbalance that tiny thing. And that really helped me because it was like, okay, I, I, you know, I try and help people who have problems with eating too many donuts. It sounds a bit, it doesn't sound very good, but it's just probably like a thousand units of positivity into the world. And I said, bleep, bleep to the person on the tube. And that's like taking one unit out. So it's like I can forget that because the universe, I'm still good with the universe. <clears throat> and so that was really, really helpful to me. So you don't have to let the small stuff really get you down or like beat yourself up for the rest of the day that I said bleep, bleep to the person on the tube. Because, you know, all my good acts and my intention generally in life is putting out so much light. Also, the other thing that's really helpful, and you'll know if you went into Hawkins' work, is that negativity doesn't have that much effect on the world than love love counterbalances with much more energy and positivity into the world than negativity which is why he shared this thing of um, like let, let's say there was a politician that everybody hated around the world and they were all sending hateful thoughts to that politician it doesn't affect them because hate hasn't got much power in it you know, but love has immense, if you send love, that has a lot of power in it. So, um, and I got that, you know, from his work, that, uh, that the power of love puts out into the unit, has so much power to create positivity in the world and miracles. Whereas if you hate someone, it doesn't do much. You can hate someone and wish they were dead and they're still alive and, and prospering. You see, and you get a thousand people hating someone and they're still do, doing doing quite well so the energy the energy of like you not liking somebody doesn't really send out it's like it's very it's very negligible whereas you sending out some love um, uh, is, is much more power a thought of love is much more powerful than a thought of hate so it's, it's very, a thought of hate is, is, has, a, has an order of magnitude which is far weaker than, than the power of love mm. So this, it's not got a strong vibration that goes out. So even if you've got a thousand people wishing you were dead, you'd probably still be alive, you know. Like, let's recruit, like, ten million people to hate me. You know, it's like, they can all hate as much as they want, I'm probably still going to be alive. You know, but, but you know, like a, like a saint sending one thought of love towards me is probably going to dramatically, you know, have such a powerful effect. Because uh, the order of power is very, very high in love and the order of hate in what it sends out vibrationally is very very weak so you need to send a lot more out so so if I spend one second hating somebody hating a politician and send like love to my pet pigeon that was more powerful than the thought of hate for a second towards the politician so oh. I found that very 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 helpful I'm sure, oh. in that way uh, and I was talking about... Yeah, but what, what if you use the non-dualistic... Like, oh, yes, sorry, sorry, yeah. To, to like, spiritual bypass this, like, amends and stuff? In, like, um, uh, it's, not, it's not the thing, you see. There, each state... Uh, like, if you, go to, if you become Buddha... Or, or you know you're living in in Christ consciousness um, that in itself is such a big blessing and that it's probably I know it's sound, gonna sound a bit odd but you your the presence of someone in in the non-dual place or in the enlightened place is already an immense blessing to the world so um, and anyway you, you've um, you're orchestrated now beyond the ego 
So whatever will happen will come out as a channel of divine grace. So it's already like an, it's a field of anti-karma just to be in that presence. It's helping relieve tons of karma within the world. So in the 12 steps, uh, which is not at the level of enlightenment, and not taking the context of becoming an enlightened teacher, then there's a great emphasis that you should apologize to everyone you've done harm to. Um, so it's a slightly different context. So sometimes when you're, if you become an enlightened teacher, you wouldn't then need to work the 12 steps and say sorry for the biscuit you stole, unless that was something that divinity orchestrated for you. Like in the 12 steps, as a sponsor in the 12 steps, if you stole a biscuit from somebody when you were three years old, you know, and let's say 18 years old, you stole a biscuit from somebody when you were 18 years old, your sponsor may say you should go back to that person and offer them a biscuit and apologize for that biscuit. Now, if you're enlightened, should you find that person and apologize and give them a biscuit? And the context is slightly different. Yeah. But you know, it might be that when you become enlightened, you see that person and you have an extra biscuit in your pocket and you give them a biscuit and say, look, I'm sorry, I stole your biscuits while I was over your place. But I, I, you know, I wouldn't go into a place of enlightenment and think I haven't done that amend for stealing that biscuit when I was five years old and I have to do it. But, you know, I am in the 12-step program, so if, but if I had a sponsor who said you should, that might be the universe saying I should find that person and say sorry. You can do things like that in the 12-step program, they'll say like find that person or uh, you, you went to, you went to um, and, you, and you, you try and find people that you've done wrong to from years ago and you try and say, say sorry to them. You start becoming a personal investigator, like, okay, so he's he got, this person got married, they've changed their name, I have to track them on Facebook and do a Google search. There they are, and that's their email address, like, can I, can I get in contact with you after five years? There's something I need to communicate with you. So that, will, that can happen. So um, if, I became, if I became enlightened, if I was like Buddha, uh, I could probably let, you know, I probably wouldn't have to do the same things that a trust that sponsor would say to me. But then again, uh, that might be a cop-out. Maybe God wants you to do those things. Um, that is the context. But someone at the level of enlightenment, you know, the, the thing of like finding someone from five years ago where you stole a biscuit is not, I think there is a different rule that applies when you're, you know, when you're trying to save when you're trying to be a saviour for the whole planet, does God want you to find the person five years ago you stole a biscuit from, to say sorry to? I mean, it's a slightly different context than being at 540. If you're at 540, your life depends on you getting to a level of spiritual consciousness, of unconditional love, at least. And so sometimes not making an amend to the person you stole a biscuit from five years ago might mean you carry on eating donuts. So it can be life, you know, because that might, you know, you need to get a minimum special spiritual threshold to stop addiction. So in that context, it might be necessary for you to find that person and offer them a donut and apologize for stealing their donuts. Otherwise, you might end up the next day eating another donut and, start, mm -hmm. and not being able to stop your donut addiction. So it's, it's funny, these are different levels of context. Mm -hmm. um, and different levels of consciousness. And so in 12 steps, it can come across as, as, as your life depends on you doing those amends. And, that's, and that, that can be true as well. But I think to hold on to that spiritual level when you're higher than that level, there is a slightly different context. And resolving it, I think if you've got a mentor or a, or a sponsor, or even someone else you can talk to. Uh, but uh, I think probably Jesus wouldn't be, God wouldn't tell Jesus to find the person he stole a biscuit from when he was like five years old. Or he might do, I don't know. I'm not God, so yeah. But is that helpful? Uh, yeah, I'm just thinking, of course, um, the, uh, I'm thinking about the spiritual bypass, like to not try to avoid interactions oh, with learning. Uh, oh. Just because you're like, oh, I'm, I'm just going to focus in the present moment, present moment, present moment. I oh. just want to be in the observer. 
and just trying to avoid the way Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. If you're new, to, I mean, if someone was new to 12 steps, I would follow all the instructions by a sponsor. Because if you just, if you're new to the observer and you're going into non-dual places, uh, it, it's still new. And so if you've got a 12-step sponsor and they say you should, you should apologize for stealing that donut when you were 18, then I would definitely do that because you're, you're not um, talking about for someone who's completely enlightened um, doing it. Doing, I don't think necessarily they, it would be necessary or God would instruct them to f find people from 10 years ago. Those. But if you're new to the observer and you've got a 12-step mentor, I would definitely follow their instructions but transcend it. So if they said, why are you doing the Course in Miracles? 12 Steps in Course in Miracles and Enlightenment are slightly different methodologies. So if someone says like, okay, me as your spiritual sponsor, I recommend you find this person and apologize and offer them a new donut for the donut you stole, then I would do that but also be, do that in the observer and transcend the meaning of that and feel out your feelings with that and still do it because you're still new to the spiritual work. So taking guidance at a 12-step level, I would do. When you become more rooted in being in the non-dual place, then t you're, you're now at a higher level than your sponsor and the 12 steps. So there's a different level of contextual information. But when you're new, I would definitely take, take spiritual advice on a practical level because I'm talking about when you're when you're fully at that level and you've integrated that level. But if you're new to the level and you're because people who are new can have very amazing spiritual experiences. But if you're having quite new spiritual experiences, I would still have the humility in the in, until that's been there for a very long time and you're rooted in that, to take spiritual instruction at a at a lower level. Yeah. Whereas later on you have your own internal direction from God. So it can be, seems like, okay. <clears throat> so it seems like, you know, God's will is always the service of the highest good. So would it be in the service of the highest good for Buddha to not speak to his followers, but to find someone that when he was 17 years old, he took a donut. So sorry, no spiritual meeting under the palm tree today. <laughs> because I have to find that person I stole a donut from when I was 17. So there is a different spiritual context mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. where he's at. So probably, you know, so you intuit that at that level. But when you're new to spiritual work and you're having profound spiritual experiences, I'd still take mm -hmm. the advice, practical information of those who are, are doing it. When you're rooted in that, you, you'll know what is in the interest of the highest good more intuitively than, than early on. But it's a great question. If you're new and you have lots of profound spiritual experience, should you not apologize for things or not take actions in the world? I would, definitely, when, you're, when, you're, when it's still all quite new. Uh, or even for, and um, yeah. yeah.